This is Karen with NewClevelandRadio.net, and it is time for Heart Mojo with Melinda Smith. And yes, I caught hey, myself. Karen. Yeah, I caught myself giving the title of your show today because I know what our topic is, and Heart Mojo is about giving off good vibrations. Okay, being kind to people and being kind to ourselves. And And understanding people. Exactly. And you and I have noticed, um, and it's not just recently, but maybe more recently, that people either are feeling so stressed that they're forgetting how to be kind, or they aren't being treated kindly, so they aren't treating others kindly. And I see it from, you know, little kids out there playing with their friends to, you know, older adults who just don't understand, like, what happened with just being a nice person. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if we can resolve that in this podcast, but I thought if we, yeah, but if we at least talk about it, maybe our listeners will hear it and start thinking about different things that they might be able to do to make somebody's day a little bit better. And I know for myself, when I thank somebody for something, and especially whether they're on my podcast or it's at my other job, by saying thank you, I usually get a response. That response can be a smile. That response might be, I really appreciated your help or I appreciated you having me on. And those words can carry us a long way during the day. Oh, yeah, absolutely. I think we have forgotten your golden rule, right? Do yes. unto others, you have them do unto you. I think we've really forgotten that. We've forgotten to stop and look at the situation. We're so busy. We're so hurried. You know, we've got a lot going on, like you mentioned earlier about being stressed with life, that we forget that a little bit of kindness goes a long way. And at some point, you're going to need the kindness too. Well, and I think it just makes for less stress. So as you were talking about, you know, many of us are stressed out. We're working longer hours. Some of us are working multiple jobs. Maybe our work schedule is totally different than our partners or the, you know, the rest of our family in the house. And that creates havoc. And when you're feeling like that, it can be easy to forget to smile or thank somebody or offer to do something for them, even if it's not your job. Um, I threw my son's clothes in the washing machine yesterday because he's been busy. I noticed they were piling over and in the past, he never would thank me, but he did the other day. And well, that's I, great. You know, I almost felt like saying, hey, I'll do this all the time. But I knew better yeah, because no. he should be responsible. <laughs> but it was like he, just that little bit of acknowledgement. It was like you noticed. OK. Um, and, you know, we all want to be acknowledged, but we want to be acknowledged for the positive things in life. Right. All right. Well, If you think about just the workplace, let's just start with that and we can go from there. But you think about the workplace, most workers, sure, we all need money. Money is important. We have to pay our bills and move forward. So if somebody thanks you with money, that's always good, right? You get a bonus, you get a raise. But if that's not possible, and in many businesses right now, that is not possible. Right. Taking a minute to say, thank you for doing that extra item that isn't normally your job isn't on your list of things to do. You know, taking the time to um, just, whether it's in front of people, whether it's sending you a private little note or a message, I think that makes all the difference. And you know, you feel good about it too. It's not just about how you make the other person feel. You know, when you know you've done something kind and it's appreciated, it makes you feel good as well. And I think that you take it forward, you pay it forward from there. Absolutely. Every so often I'll be in a line and someone's got one item and I've got 20. And I'll say, and a lot of times I'm in a hurry, to be honest. I really am. 
because I put in a lot of hours and I don't have a lot of free time, but I'll let them go first. Sometimes two people know, really? You've been waiting. I know, but you only have one item. Go ahead and get through. And it's amazing. The results are amazing how they respond. You know, it's interesting because last week um, on my weekend job, I was working with this young man who's uh, another um, rep and he was just being so helpful. It had nothing to do with his product that he's in the store training on, but he overheard a conversation and he thought, you know, maybe I can help. And he worked in tandem with me for 45 minutes. And oh, when we were done, I said to him, can I have your manager's email? And he goes, well, yeah, he didn't even ask me why. And I said to him, I want to make sure that your manager knows how helpful you were. Okay. I didn't take you away from any of the customers. You didn't walk away, you know, from any customers you were available. You knew how you could help and you pitched in. And I thought this young guy was going to start to cry. It was like, uh -huh. you would do that. And I said, absolutely. Because somebody needs to know when not only are you doing your job, but you're going above and beyond. And right. it's not like I can give him anything for it. Okay. I'm sure his boss isn't going to give him a raise, but his boss is going to keep track of any, you know, excellent comments that he gets along the way. And it might right. be helpful for him in the future. It took, yeah, you never know. Yeah, It took me maybe 10 minutes at the most to write the email. And I felt good that I could acknowledge him. And I think sometimes we don't realize how much being nice to somebody else makes us feel good. Well, I can remember, I got a thank you note. I helped someone on the phone. So from the job situation, let's move out to the people that you serve, right? Right. I answer the phone a lot. And this is a person I didn't know. And I gave her some extra help. I followed through. I got her everything that she wanted. And then one day I get a card in the mail. And I'm like, wow, who's, who's sending me a card? And she said, I just want to thank you for t your kindness and taking the time to answer my questions and do, you know, help me get all the answers I needed. And that really made me feel good. It's like, well, you know what, that makes that extra time because I really didn't have the time, right? It was late. I wanted to go home. I had a lot of things to do, but it made all the difference for me. It's like, okay, now I know why I go ahead and do it. Sometimes I do it because I think, well, I just got to do it, right? But he, I saw the difference it made for one minute, for one person. You never know, you know, one thing that you say to make that person's whole day. They could be having a bad day. You have no idea when you meet someone what they're going through, whether they have health Absolutely. issues, whether they have personal, you know, relationship issues or job issues. And being mean to them is one more thing that makes them feel bad about themselves. The one nice thing can change their entire day. Oh, absolutely. You know, and we've sort of hinted on this in other podcasts um, through Heart Mojo because we all have a story in our life. In fact, we have many stories in our life and anything can trigger back those memories of that story. And sometimes it's a good feeling, but oftentimes it's something that takes us back to a time and place that just hurts and we don't know how to express it but sometimes it comes out poorly in our interactions with other people and especially if you know the person that's a good time to you know you know offer them an, an opportunity to really express themselves okay you're getting angry with me okay is it something I really just did or does it even relate to me at all? And I know mm -hmm. I've, I've done this a lot with my husband and my son. You know, every once in a while, my husband will just tease me about, oh, you've just really, really hurt me. And I was like, okay, um, so explain to me how I did it. 
Now, again, a lot of times he's joking with me, but I've learned to do this with other people because maybe I used a word they didn't like. Maybe mm -hmm. I referenced something that they didn't like, or maybe I'm accusing them of something that they're not part of. And that happens a lot amongst our friends and a lot in the workplace. And at least I see it in the areas that I'm working in. Yeah. You know, on our last show, I believe we had uh, somebody on that talked about clothing right. and how certain clothing things are representative of something that may have happened to them when they wear it again. And those feelings can come up in that. So maybe that's something that will happen that day. Maybe they don't own a lot of clothing. Maybe they had to wear that to a funeral of a friend and it makes them sad, but they have to wear it because, well, they don't have a lot of clothing. So you don't know, they could put that on that day and all of those feelings start to come back and you need to replace that with something kind. Exactly. I think difficult, when you deal with difficult people, kindness is the number one thing you have to work with. Well, if you can be kind and give them a minute, let them vent, let them get through whatever it is they're doing and listen, then you can help move forward. Well, before we went on air today, I started thinking about, you know, there's random act of kindness day. There's kindness week. Um, there's kindness month, which actually is coming up in November. So if everybody wants to prepare, that'd be a great thing to do. Um, but I sometimes wonder why do we have to have a specific day to be kind? That should mm -hmm. really be in our DNA. In and, our heart every day. Absolutely. And, you know, I'm not saying that I'm perfect at it, but I often can catch myself in the middle of being unkind and saying, let me take a break. Um, and I did that with somebody, oh, about a month ago. Um, this person was really getting, you know, getting me upset, getting me aggravated. Um, I tried nicely just to like diffuse the subject. And when she didn't want to, I finally said, I need a minute. And I captured myself. I said, before I get angry, you need to know this is what's going on with me right now. And she said, well, I don't need to hear that. I said, no, you do because it's coming out in my approach to you right now. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I asked that we table our discussion, which we did for a couple of days so that I could get myself in the right place to have the right conversation. Right. And we don't always think about that, but you know, mindfulness typically helps us get through the bad times and it makes us nicer people. Well, if she would have said, Hey, there's obviously something going on. I need to learn more. So she had an option, right? Right. An option to ask you, would you like to talk about it? Now, maybe you didn't, but I think putting that out there would have made you feel better. Like, okay, she really does care enough to ask. Exactly. Not just say, okay, well, fine. I don't really need to hear about this kind of what she did actually. But I think that if you take a minute and you say, well, is there something I can help you with? Now, I know you're, you seem like you're not having a good day. Is there something you want to talk about? Do you want a cup of coffee? Or if you see it, many times I see that in people through work or, you know, some of my friends that I'm out in the workforce with, you can see they're having a bad day. Right. So I may go over and say, hey, can I go grab that cup of coffee for you? Don't get up. I'll get it for you. Or if I know them well enough, I know one some of their favorite things and I bring them one. That's just being kind. That's just making them have a good day. Like, oh, my God, you thought about that for me? Thank you. I actually do that with flowers a lot. I get flowers. Um, one of the things that I participate in is a group that dances for seniors. We do line dancing. And I think we've talked about it right. before. It's in the senior networking group. And just the act of dancing and singing and entertaining is giving kindness to the residents. But there's always extra flowers because... We've had her, uh, I think we haven't we had her on the show? Maybe not. 
Um, I don't think so. Somebody who collects flowers, puts them together and donates the flowers to these. Uh -huh. Okay. And donates the flowers to events. Um, so they don't go to waste. So they have a second purpose before they're no good anymore. Right? right. And I will take extra ones and just drop them off sometimes or take them to work and give them to people at work because it only takes a minute to do that. But boy, the results have been great. I mean, they, you know, oh my gosh, really? I can have that? Yeah, I brought that for you. You know, pick the one you want. So I think it goes a long way, not only in the workplace, with your customers, and then, of course, at home, which we really haven't talked about much yet, but right. kind well, of bringing up your kindness day. What about Mother's Day? Mother's Day is not the only day you should be kind to your mother. Exactly. And I'm not picking on you, boys. I'm just, <laughs> just throwing it out there. Yeah. Well, and we and we see that in so many other families as well. Okay. And um, I'll never forget my mother and my father's mother, her, her mother-in-law, um, it was, they got along, but they didn't get along. Um, and I'll never forget. It was a mother's day. We went to my grandmother's house and my mother brought her a present, whatever. And my grandmother did not appreciate it. She expected something else. And I remember her saying to my mother and I, gosh, I had to been younger than 10 at the time, but she said to my mother, you should have brought me nothing if you were going to bring me this. And I wish I could remember what it was. And my mother, I mean, her face just totally dropped. And it was like, um, I'll get you something else if you'd like. No, you've already ruined Mother's Day. Oh my gosh. And I asked my mother about that many years later. And she said, your grandmother just didn't know how to really accept a gift, unless it was something she purposely asked you for ahead of time mm -hmm. and you got it for her. Then it was, oh, thank you. How thoughtful. But if it was something that you just did um, and gave her, she wasn't happy. And, you know, that made me sad about my grandmother, but it's like, okay, I knew in the future if I was ever going to get her anything for her to appreciate it, I had to sort of dig in to find out what it was that she wanted. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's difficult. I mean, it's yeah. like, I'm going to go out and I'm going to buy you a handkerchief because that you'll be happy with that. But boy, that doesn't make me happy to give it to you, you know? Right. So, yeah. well, I think we all fall into that. I mean, I know I've done it myself. I mean, hate to admit it. But I, I know I've done it myself, you know, where there's a situation where your expectations are there right. and you expect something and then you're disappointed. And sometimes you're, you know, I think I'm pretty good about hiding that most times, but occasionally, okay, you know, I've hit my limit of whatever stressors going on in my life. And then my reaction isn't as kind as it should have been instead of saying, oh, thank you. Right. Whatever you know, the reaction was really this, you know, and I felt bad about it after the fact, but and this is a family issue in your family. You would think your family would know, right? And I guess sometimes they don't, and they don't know what you're going through. Even if you live with them or you don't live right. with them, you know, your kids might be out of town. Your mother might be out of town. The daily life to life, you know, sit your day to day in life situations can come up and bubble up there too, even if you have the best intentions. And so I think if you take a minute to, again, to listen and think about what just happened, you can react again, kindly. Right. Instead of, you know, continuing to perpetuate the negativity of what happened or harboring it. There's nothing worse than harboring the anger of something because that'll eat you up and then you're never oh, yeah. kind. Exactly. So why do you think after being cooped up with the pandemic, all of us just couldn't wait to be with each other uh, back at work in the same environment, uh, being able to go out with friends and family and coworkers? 
why do you think there is so much stress and tension now that we're seeing and hearing about so many people who are saying, I, I haven't heard a kind word in a day or two or a week or more. And sometimes that's how I feel. I think, first of all, the pandemic was just the end of the perfect storm, right? There were a lot of other things going on in the world, you know, uh, politically, um, things that changed where we're not taking care of the environment as much, issues with other countries. I think there's a fear. And it's just, it's there. We don't want to admit it's there, but it's there. And so it's a protective me uh, mechanism to be uh, not nice, angry maybe. Oh, I'm not going to be nice because somebody's going to take advantage of me. Right. Because blah, 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 right? They go over all these things that happen that really normally doesn't affect their day-to-day -day life. But they have pulled that in, made that so much a part of who they are. We've seen it politically. You know, in the past, have we had political um, arguments? Of course. You know, it's happened for, you know, years. Right. But never has it been like this. So right. volatile, so scary that people are willing to hurt each other. There's no kindness there. You know, instead of saying, look, I don't agree with you. You're entitled to your opinion. That's a kinder way to approach it. You know, okay, you know, we can agree to disagree. Remember, we were taught as kids never to talk about religion and politics. Right. And yet, that's the main conversation today. Instead of looking at being kind to each other, looking at what we can do to get over the pandemic, to move forward, to help our economy, to do those things and focus on that, we're still focusing on those little nitpicky things or big things. And I don't know. I think that affects your ability to be kind because you don't want to be kind to somebody now you, you've learned to hate. Even if you don't know them, you hate them. Well, I know for the last um, three months now, I've been uh, taking a, it started out as a six week seminar um, and we were all grouped together. I think there were 10 or 12 of us in the group and we were learning about ourselves and each other, but mostly about ourselves, why we do and the things that we do. And my big thing is I've been a people pleaser the majority of my life. Me and too. the more, and the more you please people, the more times you can get hit in the gut and you then start to question yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, like, why, if I do this nice thing, then you will like me. And if you will like me, then I'll be happy. And what I learned in the group was, yeah, I can still do nice things, but I shouldn't just go out and do it and expect anything in return. Right. Well, and yeah, even, you yeah. can't. And even though most of the time I wasn't expecting anything back in return, there were those moments that it would reflect on me that, oh, I've done this, you know, 10, 15, 20 times. And, you know, it doesn't feel good to me. Well, you know what? I have that right to change how I'm doing something. Mm -hmm. but I didn't think about it before taking, um, doing these uh, online tests and talking to other people and finding out so many other people were thinking, the same way I was. It was like, okay. So just because, um, and I, when I reflected on one, this, every time I'd go to visit my mother up in Detroit, my mother would have a list of people I should call from her house. You know, I want you to call your aunt and I want you to call your cousin. And, I'm, and it was like, mom, I, I don't have to use your phone. I could call on my phone, but I'm not calling them because I don't really have anything to say. No, no, no. You're in my house. I and So I would do all these things. I would spend hours on the phone talking to people who maybe didn't even want to talk to me. And I could have cared less if I was talking to them, but I was trying to be nice to my mother. And what happened after all those phone calls, 
I was feeling terrible. Yeah. I had, there was, they were empty phone calls. Um, I finally got the nerve to say to my mother one day, um, I know who I need to call, but I'm here to visit you. And that was the best thing that worked out for me. It was like, you know, if I want to call my aunt, I'll call her, but right. you know, I don't have to do it from your doorstep. And I think a lot of people live through life that way. They do things because somebody says, you know, you need to do it. And then eventually you're angry because you're doing things that don't have any value for you. So we have to identify the value. Right. But then sometimes we should be doing things because there is value. And it's right. hard to explain that sometimes to younger people. I mean, I don't know about you, but we were brought up with cards. Greeting cards were a big thing. And to me, it's a big thing. I don't care if you make the card. I really don't. You don't have to spend money. But for me, it means something because I was brought up that way. So even though I've taught my children that, it's not important to them. They could care less if I get a card. Now, maybe it's because they they recently did lose their one grandmother, but maybe it's because they haven't had the loss. I think things like that become more valuable to us. Those little kind things right. that we get from people, the cards or a letter. Nobody writes letters really anymore. Um, or a little trinket. They end up meaning something to you because it was done with kindness. And it's hard to teach young people that. I mean, I'm sure they have their own way. Since I'm not that young person, mm -hmm. I don't know what those ways are. I'm sure they have their own way of addressing it. But I do know that I think we, because our times were slower, because we needed each other more. And I think actually we need each other more now than ever, just because right. of everything that happened. But at that time, we really did, right? You couldn't have a computer like this and talk to your loved one. You had right. to maybe get a ride there or take a bus there and you had to have money to get there. And so you needed each other that we were a little kinder sometimes. We, we thought about it like, Mrs. So-and-so didn't have to do that for me. Mrs. So-and-so didn't have to pick me up and take me to the hospital to visit my daughter who just had a baby and I don't drive. I mean, my grandmother never drove. She had to rely on other people or right. take a bus. And she did appreciate that. And she would, you know, bake something or give cookies. You know, and back in the day, you moved in a neighborhood, somebody brought you cookies. Oh, people brought you over a lot of different things. You know, they noticed you, they welcomed you. Um, today we're almost afraid sometimes to, to welcome I. our next door neighbor. Um, and, you know, again, to all of our listeners out there, we're not here to say that we're perfect at doing all the right things. But no. I think what we're here to say is that we're trying to recognize that if we fail at doing the right thing, why we have failed at it and how we can do better the next time. Um, I know, and again, I'm referring to my weekend job. Um, you know, I walk in there and I'm there Friday, Saturday, and Sundays. And I walk in and I uh, say hi to everybody. I, you know, ask how their week was. Not necessarily, you know, you know, did you use any of the pointers that I gave you last week or how many things did you sell or nothing like that? It's just, how was your week? Right. And I have one young guy who is, um, he, he, he's been separated from his family for a lot of reasons. Um, and he's 18 years old and he is really growing up very quickly, but he enjoys being able to say to me, can I tell you what happened the other night? I just need somebody to listen. And I know my friends, you know, could care less. Care. And I'll say to him, you know, if it's appropriate to tell me here in public, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And, um, and it always is, but it's usually something about, you know, this separation anxiety from his family. Right. And, um, you know, I'm just a shoulder to listen to and listen to him because I don't have experience in that area. Um, I'm not going to tell him what to think or how to do it, but I can always tell he feels so much better. And on Sunday, when I leave for the week, he'll always come up to me and he'll say, I just appreciated you this weekend. The little things I had to talk about, you listened. And that's all I did. 
was listen. Mm -hmm. Well, don't we all remember their favorite teacher? Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Who would do kind things or listen to you. You're having a bad day. Made you feel good about yourself. That's what you're doing for him. Right. You know, you're you're kind of that substitute individual, you know, to be able to listen and lend an ear. And he appreciates that. You are showing him that kindness where somebody else would not. And again, it takes very little of my time and effort. Okay. Um, Sometimes, you know, we will use the excuses. I'm tired. I'm stressed. um, It's inappropriate. But you don't know how long it's going to take. So do I have the time for this or don't I? Okay. Um, Is it inappropriate or isn't it? It's allowing somebody to start to verbalize it and you can let them know at some point, you know, this isn't the right place or I'm not the right person to tell this to. Right. You can say that in a nice way as well. Right. Well, and you're talking about somebody young and I work with seniors most of the time, you know, of course my friends in the network are, you know, um, my age or younger usually, but the seniors I think about when I, when I'm around them, what I think about is how much they've lost. How, and we really don't think about it. And until we get to that point in life, I mean, I'm technically a senior. I have lost things and I've lost people I care about. And Lord knows every time I turn around, somebody's passing away that I went to school. Right. with. But it isn't just that kind of loss. You know, in my instance, working with people, it's loss of their freedom. Maybe they can't drive anymore. Maybe their family put them in there. They move, They live out of state. They never get to see them. Maybe they have a language barrier. Maybe they don't feel well. And they don't really want to tell you that, but they just don't feel well. There are so many things. They don't have the social outlets. They, they're loss after loss after loss. When I worked in the home care industry, and I would call, well, I would have um, a caregiver and I would be talking to them and they would call me, oh, Mrs. So-and-so, she's such a witch. This is what she did. Da, 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 da. And I said, I want you to stop and I want you to put yourself in their shoes. I want you to stand there and think about if this was you, your mother, your grandmother, any, your child even, put yourself in those shoes. How would you feel? Would you be angry? The anger is not directed at you. The anger is directed at the world. And if you can understand that your reaction is not a battle of fighting with each other, it's trying to understand and kindness, right? Right. Responding with kindness. Now, does it always work? Does that diffuse it? Honestly, no. There are many people who, you know, react and they're still angry. But it doesn't really matter because your reaction will make you feel better that you handled it. It won't create that angst in your gut exactly you have to go take care of that person or see that person and that's just i think that's a life thing some people they're born with it they just know you know they're compassionate they're kind and some of it's a learned experience and i think the most valuable thing i've ever done is work with seniors because you see how quickly they see life pass by Well, and I think we have to think about something. Some of us grow up and we decide either we want children or we don't want children. Those who choose not to have children can be for many, many reasons. But if you're not, if you don't think that you are equipped to have a child and you make the decision not to, I applaud you for that. In the same way, I applaud people for not being child care workers if that's not where their interest lies Mm -hmm. because taking care of a child um teaching a child is almost at the same level as when we become elderly okay absolutely it is and you know many don't even realize that maybe they're not talking clearly you know especially those who sit around most of the day by themselves, they have no idea if they're thinking clearly or speaking clearly. And um, I'm going to say this and 
Um, I might even tell my brother he should listen to this. Uh, my it's my brother's 80th birthday today. Happy and, birthday! Uh, yes, and um, when I talk to him out in California, where he is somewhat isolated, yes, he has a couple of um, Scrabble groups that he runs, and when he's out and about, he's he's vibrant. But the majority of the time, he's in his small condo um, with his wife. And they don't do a lot of socializing. So if I call him, sometimes I think, you know, my brother is senile and it scares me being this far away. However, a couple of weeks ago, he was in Michigan and I drove up there to see him. He is very cognitive. Okay. He's, he's really got his head on straight, but he was out socializing yeah. It brought out the vibrancy in him. And I said to him, you know, I've been worried about you for the last year. I know you have some health problems, but cognitively, it was like you can't hold a conversation. And he said, look at my condo is 700 square feet. And it's me and my wife. And since the pandemic, we basically are isolated in there unless we have something very specific to do. And I thought about that. It's like, you have no room to breathe. Right. You know? He sits in his easy chair and he's there watches unless he has to TV. go to the bathroom or yeah, watches TV, uh, works on his computer, but he's, you know, it's one focus with the screen. He's not really communicating with anybody. And so we have to stop and think about that that when we do get together with people who are somewhat isolated, that they, it's going to take them some time to get acclimated to having people around them. Right. And how they react to them. Exactly. And you and I are on the screen a lot, but it doesn't replace being in person. Oh, absolutely. We used to do this podcast in person, remember? Yep. Absolutely. Now, we couldn't be on YouTube and do this. Well, we probably could. We'd figure it out. But we used to do this in person because it was radio style for right. us. But there was a camaraderie that happened there. And when we're doing everything on the screen, now you and I know each other well enough at this point that we still have that relationship. But what about other people or somebody who didn't see each other as frequently as we did? You know, right. they, they may be family, but they don't see each other. So their interaction is not going to be the same. Exactly. And it's easy. I mean, how many times have people logged out? Well, we can't do it because it's a podcast, but a meeting, they're not in the picture. They just loop, hit the button. Oh, yeah. I'm not using my picture today. So they don't have to be social. And if you're not right. social, you lose those social cues. And one of those being kindness, the thing that we started the show with. Um, that, and that happens all the time. And again, same thing in my industry, even seniors, they lose that kindness because they, they only are focusing on whatever they're dealing with. So unless they have more social interaction wherever they're living, they lose that. Absolutely. And once it's gone, especially if there are um, cognitive changes, it's gone. It's not coming back. And that's the scary part for people. So for those people in the community, whether you have it as part of your job, whether you run across them, <clears throat> excuse me, in the store where you work, you have to think about that. Absolutely. You know, they're not, it's really not a personal attack on you. It's a reflection of what they've been going through. And if you understand it's a reflection and just, even if you don't know, maybe it isn't, maybe they've been a jerk their whole life, but your reaction can make a difference for them. And if it doesn't, so what? It makes a difference for you, right? And your response and how you feel that day. Well, I hope our listeners um, will contact us. I'm going to have both uh, Melinda's Facebook page um, in the show notes, um, as well as our Facebook page and um, the station email. And what I'm going to put on the Facebook page is we want to welcome you to talk to us about kindness, whether it be in the workplace, in your home, in your neighborhood. 
um, some of the things that we can do on a daily basis, not just waiting for random act, act of kindness day, kindness week, kindness month, um, somebody's birthday, because I'm going to be really honest with you, Melinda, if somebody just is nice to me one day a year, it makes me wonder um, what's wrong with me the rest of the year. Right. And I do have one friend who specifically never wishes me a happy birthday on my birthday and randomly she'll pick other dates during the year to wish me a happy year. And That's I love nice. it because, you know, I never know when it's going to come. Now we talk and we do other things, you know, but when I get those messages it's like, okay, you're thinking of me today. I love it. Okay. And I don't do it as often with her. I will admit that um, because I get myself wound up on the computer here, you know, preparing for shows, doing shows, whatever. Um, but typically when I get that, I then start to think about now, what can I do for her? Because she just made my day and right. it doesn't cost a cent. It's just a way of being nice. And that's, that's wonderful. I think that we also need to think about that in our family situations because it is so easy to take advantage of our family. And you mentioned earlier about the laundry. Right. I mean, as being one thing, but it doesn't have to be a big thing, right? But our family, we sort of get into a rut. You know, we work, we come home, we're tired, the other person's tired. And then we forget that little maybe hug, that extra hug, if you know that's what they like. Or, hey, you want to do popcorn? Or I bought you ice cream. I know you had a bad day. And actually, that happened recently for me because I had a bad day. And ice cream is one of my favorite things. That and a cocktail. Uh -oh. um, but, they, but I had ice cream. And honestly, it did make me feel better. And I appreciated that. And it wasn't a lot. It wasn't a big, expensive thing. It was about taking the minute to remember that I was not, in advance, knew that I was not having a good day. And gave me that little gift at the end of the day as a surprise. And that really made a difference for me. So I want people to think about that too. You know, we've talked about work. We've talked about being out in the world with strangers, our customers. Um, but family is also one of those things that we have to, when we come home, you know, we need to think about them too. Absolutely. Remembering to be kind. Karen, this is going to be off subject, but do we have the same color polish on? It sure looks like it, except I, I have designs. Mine's lavender. Yeah, mine too. Oh, on this side, it looks gray, but hey. See? No, it's still lavender. I just ah. have the design on it. So ah. I know everybody, you're looking at this going, really, they're talking nails now. But <laughs> I kept looking over going, that's the same color polish. I know you know, I have to tell you that I cannot tell you how many times I've been out and about, okay? And because I use a different color every week, just about, mm -hmm. there's always somebody, whether it's in the grocery store, doctor's office, um, even pumping gas the other day, somebody said to me, what color is your nail polish? And I just look at my nails to tell you, <laughs> didn't know which it's color changing. I had on at the moment. And well, you know what? Those things are another act of kindness. It's right, because they noticed. Notice. They noticed what you wore. They noticed. Yep. My nails always do designs. Thank you, Candy Amato. You've always done a great job. Candy's been doing my nails for more years than I really want to admit to. But people notice that. And the fact that they do, it, it's sweet. You know, it's like, yep. oh, I love your nails. And it's like, thank you. It just makes me feel good. Nails are my thing. So I've been doing them a long time. But again, that's a little random act of kindness that people notice that and comment. Absolutely. So. Well, we'll do this again uh, in about two weeks. Now, um, for some of you who are watching this, if we have, um, I don't think we told anybody what day of the week we're doing this, but um, this won't be posted for a couple of days. So uh, if you knew that uh, Melinda was going to be recording with me uh, for Heart Mojo today don't expect to see it till middle of next week because i have a new computer and i can't post anything right now oh no yeah, yeah. but well, that's okay we'll hold on to it and we'll hold on to it 
And just remember, everybody, you know, sometimes we have a guest, sometimes we don't. Karen and I have talked about this a lot. You know, again, we go through life's challenges, and this was the challenge of being kind and remembering to be kind and to put out kindness. Um, but sometimes it's just good for us to have a conversation Absolutely. because that's how this all started for me. And I want you to get to know me as well as the guests that come on. And I choose the guest with Karen so that we are hitting different things that might interest you. But I'm hoping that in every single podcast, you find one little nugget that works for you in whatever thing, whatever we're talking about. So thank you for listening. I truly appreciate it. And we'll talk again soon. Talk Have again a great soon. day, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye.